Hello everybody, Danny TCV the Corona Violin here. Now, this video is going to be a bit different than normal. In fact, it's not a bit different, it's completely different than anything I've normally done. Except for, especially, you know, a year ago and further back, I, I occasionally did those channel update videos, and those were really just blabathons, except they always had a purpose. But that's the closest thing you can relate this to, because this video may or may not be kind of the start of like an unofficial type of series type thing. Basically, I don't know uh, if I'll make very many of these, or if I'll keep making them or whatever. But this is the first video and first edition of something I officially decided to call random talk or random chats. Where effectively, that's quite literally what I'm going to be doing in these videos. I'm just going to be chatting about random things, whatever yeah, kind of comes to mind or what I want to talk about at whatever time, you know. Just chill, laid back, you know, without a purpose, just whatever comes to mind, let's, let's talk about it. Now, you may notice that the audio on this video is quite different than any other videos you have yet to have watch on my channel ever. And that's because of the fact that this is a brand new microphone I got for Christmas from my brother Mario. It's absolutely epic because it's a professional microphone rather than just the simple economic blue snowball, which does its job. It's really cool. I think on, depending on what I'm going to make, I'd probably opt to use the blue snowball depending on what it is versus obviously other times, say, you know, 60, 50, 60 percent of the time, I'll probably use this new microphone. It's just certain situations because of the compressor inside of the uh, blue snowball and the fact that it kind of muffles all the extra sounds, it muffles the background sounds, it muffles even you know certain pitches and whines and the kind of undertones of my voice and stuff, which I, I appreciate hearing, not or rather not hearing those in post recording. This microphone has so much more definition. It's like the main thing, and so far, even though I really haven't used it much, it's so far the only thing I've really noticed about it is that it has so much more clarity in terms of definition, so much more depth to its definition too, than that of my Blue Snowball, because again, the Blue Snowball has a compressor, this microphone does not. So you're much more likely to hear the power supply fan, not necessarily louder, it might fool you to think it's louder, but it's not, it's just that it's a lot crisper, because and a lot sharper, because it has a lot more definition to its audio sourcing. Same with the undertones of my voice that normally wouldn't hear, including kind of a little whine undertone I have. It's kind of like a little whine sound, which I don't really like, but hey, it happens. And then the traffic, possibly the neighbors upstairs or outside. So I apologize for anything like that. It's just an adjustment that primarily I'm going to have to make. Obviously, you guys will probably have to get used to too. And this is an adjustment period for you guys. It'll probably take a little while because you're not used to it necessarily, at least on my videos, compared to what I have with the Blue Snowball. So with that all the way, I have actually already recorded like the first probably three quarters of this video before I barely tapped my toe against the power cord of my surge protector that my monitor and my computer were plugged into. And that tap was just enough to tap it for the rest of the way out of the wall because I don't think, I don't think most people would normally think to check periodically their cables make sure they're not coming out of their sockets but with me because of being 6'2 and not having you know being obviously against the wall I tend to bump into the cords quite frequently with my toes even though it's you know it's I mean it's lightweight touches it's enough to actually take it out of the sockets a little bit by a little bit it, you know over the course of like a month it progressively gets further and further out of the wall and I have a hard time remembering to actually check I lost everything, of course, because in order to save the audio sourcing, you have to push the stop button and wait for it to auto-save, or you have to push the stop button and then push close. So it automatically saves that audio source for you, and then you have to save the file, of course. I didn't do that because I was busy recording it, so... But hey, we're here, and I hope you guys enjoy uh, this video. It depends on... I, I, rather, I should say, I don't know how exactly this, at least this first video of the random chats, you know, are, is gonna go in terms of editing. I'm mean, gonna have to wait and see in editing what exactly I'm intending to do, what exactly I'm planning to do. I might just put up some sort of a funny, you know, but relevant to the fact that it's either me or my channel picture in the background to make it an actual proper video and not just an audio file. Or I might, or let's just say and or, I might put up some images of various things I've looked up. Or I might actually record a little bit of the background in other videos. In this video, I won't record the backgrounds, but I may take snapshots. I don't entirely know. It 
fully depends on what I decide to do in editing. This series is going to be, or, you know, well, uh, pseudo series, I guess, is just going to really be casual. So it's just going to be something where it's, it's not necessarily arranged, it's not necessarily planned, it's not necessarily, you know, on a schedule, obviously, it's not going to be. And it's going to be very, 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 very podcast-like. Even if it is just me talking, which I know some podcasts obviously are just solitary people, but... Yeah, you know, it's just something that I, I decided I really wanted to do. It's something that I'd be good at anyway because I'm attention deficit, which means that I can, you know, really get in some variety in terms of subjects and stuff. But at the same time, I am a very big time, like I call blabber or, you know, I have blabathons and I just talk, 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 talk. So it's actually pretty beneficial. But without further ado, let's get into the video contents. As in, for me at least, I'm redoing it, basically. But on the bright side, it should save a little time. I didn't save time, I actually am over a minute more. In fact, two minute and a half, two minutes longer than the beginning of the last one. Because I had to explain a little extra, plus I probably put in extra words, because I, I, I am me. I do these things for some reason. I'm still wasting more time. First random topic I talked about and I wanted to talk about is vehicle related. Why? When I'm not really a vehicle guy, I don't know what to tell you. Other than on the YouTube recommended list, I saw Jeremy. Jeremy, I can't remember his last name for some reason. Is it Clarkson? For some reason, I can never remember the name of it, but that, that big time audio, auto, audio, <laughs> auto show uh, on the BBC that like... Any car person's like, holy shit, that's like the was the best show ever. That one. If you're car enough, you probably know what I'm referring to. If you're car enough. If you're enough like a car. In fact, if you are literally supplanted out of an auto manufacturing plant or assembly plant, then you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> what kind of English is this? On those YouTube recommendations with him, it was a video of him talking about how a Yaris, a Toyota Yaris, which blows my goddamn mind. A Toyota Yaris is the real car, so to speak. Real car, which, you know, it's like, that's like straight up, like, in other words, he's presenting it as like, it's the realest car, you know, in other words, it's, it's economic role, probably, it's probably pretty sturdy, probably pretty comfy, that stuff. And then it's really how you're supposed to make cars. But it blows my mind, because as soon as I, whenever I hear a Yaris, I think of a Neon, and an Echo, or vice versa with any of those three. You could just vice versa. You could you could flip it around because they all to me are pretty much just about the exact same vehicle, and the fact that they're made to compete with each other, well, specifically the Yaris and the Echo, I would assume is made was made intentionally and decided to be made by Toyota to directly compete with uh, Chrysler's Dodge Neon, um, seeing as it had a lot of success, especially in the used car department. Um, in terms of an economic vehicle, especially considering how small it is, a compact economic vehicle. You know, Dodge Neons, at least in, you know, northwest part of Oregon, it seems like in the large, largely, you know, kind of the U.S., it seems to be one of the very first cars that people a lot of times get, especially if they're teenagers. It's usually, I don't know, it seems like they're usually sold for anywhere between like a 1000 to about 1500 bucks used. Um, which is, you know, a relatively good deal, especially considering they seem to last quite a while, oddly enough, being a U.S. made and, manuf you know, manufactured and assembled vehicle. Especially from Chrysler, who is known for around the world now for their infamously hideous and excuse for a braking system, especially in terms of the fact that those things are so faulty and they do not last almost at all. Plus, at the same time, they're also known for their hideous electrical systems and causing a lot of problems there as well. Yes, I, to comparatively, they seem like that's the case. And especially considering the Yaris and the Echo, both, to me, I would swear were released... Not just as competition, like just in general, like to the to the neon, because it's basically the same type of car. It's it's dirt cheap. It's even cheaper than for Toyota. It's even cheaper than the Camrys and Corollas, base models of those. They're smaller than those both, and the Echo, of course, is about the size of a neon. And you know the Yaris is known as a blueberry, especially if it's blue, because not only is it round and small and compact and blue a lot of the time, but if you know about this show Psych, then that's that's the big reference point where that 
it got that name. Besides the fact that in that show they kind of had a little set of subtle jabs at that and the the vanity drivers, so to speak, the ones that like refuse to touch that because they need at least a little more vanity, a little more fancy, a little more comfort, a little more, you know, whatever extra in their car in order to even consider buying it or using it. So it was kind of an inside joke a little bit, it's very subtly, as they would do in that show, put it in there. Like, basically, there's a hint, hint, here's a jab, this car sucks, but at least it gets you, you know, it does its job what its cars were originally made for, which is simply get you to point A, from point A to point B. I keep thinking about that, and I and I realize to myself, because it's a fucking Yaris, and they have this big car aficionado guy, you know, big shot around the world, talking about how it's a real car, so to speak, and you know what that means, especially with car nuts and aficionados, it's like, they, I mean, they freaking mean that, like, it's a beast, basically, usually what that's supposed to mean, it's like, you know, it's pretty damn high on their list for praise, and it's a freaking Toyota Yaris, and I'm thinking to myself, that's like saying that about a Dodge Neon, what? universe are we living in that that's a thing that he actually freaking said um so it got me thinking about that and it got me of course onto the line of thought of it's got to be to release as a competitor what year was the yaris and the echo released versus what year was the dodge neon released and when did the dodge neon stop production versus the the yaris and the Echo stop production. Well, I can tell you right now that my guess was for the Dodge Neon was between 2002 and 2005. So it started production, it was officially released in 2002, and then ceased production in 2005. That was its last year of sales and production. That was my guess. And it wasn't inherently wrong, because when you look up Dodge Neon, you'll, you'll find that the 2005 Dodge Neon is the, the thing that's featured. It's the Neon that is featured on Wikipedia, it's featured on Google, and you'll notice like 2005 throughout the first page of results, along with one 2002 Dodge Neon on that first page of the Google search. Because those are the two most well known and renowned and regarded editions of Dodge Neons in the entirety of its production existence. So I wasn't entirely wrong. Because, yeah, those are the most two popular years, and coincidentally, it's the it's two of the three year span, I guess. So the first edition of its production cycle is between 94 and 2005. I got the last three years of its first production cycles. I say first because they started uh, producing it again from 2016 on through now, of, oddly enough. If you go from that and keep that in mind, 94 to 2005, and then with my guess for the Toyota Yaris, which was the first one I looked up. I guess that the Toyota Yaris started production in 2008 and went through 2015. And it turned out it started production in 1999 and has actually never stopped, they've never stopped producing Yaris's. And it's, so it's been started, it started production in 99 and they've been going through to this next 2019 year. So it's basically gonna be 20 years of Yaris. So I wasn't entirely wrong because it did release a, dead center, exact bullseye, halfway through the first uh, editions and lifespan of the Dodge Neon. Dodge Neon started production in, and started sales in 1994, the Yaris in 1999. The first edition of the Dodge Neon stopped in 2005, this one's been continuing ever since. Like I, my guess for the Toyota Echo is exactly the same as the Yaris, so 2008 through 2015. As it turns out, I wasn't entirely wrong, again, about the concept, the base thing I said, which is that they both were released likely as a direct competitor, most specifically the Echo, because it's the most similar car in every way to the Dodge Neon, was specifically, they were both specifically released to directly compete with the Dodge Neon's success. And the Toyota Echo was produced from 2000 to 2005. The last five years of the first edition of the Neon. So I wasn't entirely wrong on that front. However, the year, the guessing of the year span between 2008 and 2015 was, was wrong for the Echo completely. And it wasn't inherently wrong for the Yaris, considering that's kind of, you know, a little right of center, uh in its lifespan of production cycle. So I wasn't entirely wrong.
I wasn't entirely wrong. So it's actually, I would argue that this shows that I was right. It was actually, whether they admitted it, whatever admitted it or not, it straight up is made, released and made, produced as a direct competitor to the success of the Dodge Neon in the U.S. marketplaces. And when you look up the Toyota Echo, it actually comes up as a Toyota Platz, which it then also says that it was also known as a, and replaced by a Toyota Belta. But that's in Nippon. That's actually in Japan, where the vehicles and the company is based and placed. So what it is, is that it's actually a Platz or a Belta, but it was released in the U.S. as an Echo. And then other places, including the current edition of the Yaris's, the Seras Sedans, is technically an Echo, but they're calling it a Yaris. So uh, while the Echo was existent, then uh, the Echo was just simply an Echo in the U.S. and it was in other export markets uh, released as likely the Yaris. So it, I wasn't entirely wrong, but it's just also that was just a little extra interesting tidbit. Next, I want to speak about. I wanted to go and did start speaking about around this exact time. In fact, in the video, was the sudden peak the last two years or so in pirate themed RPG games. So the main three that we talk about now, of course, and know of, and most people think of is Black Wake, which started it all, realistically. I mean, obviously there's other games that kind of tried it too, right before Black Wake, but Black Wake was really the only one that got big enough to be considered in this three-way conversation. Sea of Thieves got released. And so it was Black Wake, I was really fizzled fast. Sea of Thieves came out, and that one peaked insane. Like, it took over goddamn YouTube content creators, channels entirely sometimes, Straight up, like, I've never seen a game that you just knew when it released it was going to be one of those games that was going to last maybe a couple of months at best with the hype, and then just suddenly everybody would stop playing it. Well, guess what? For those of us like myself, and also Molly, or Foxtrot44, which is uh, Lordman and Tim 77s or Wade's uh, wife, Straight up, I remember this so well because it was amusing to me and also I was like, hey, look, there's somebody who's more than familiar with games in the entire industry, you know, and plays a lot of it herself, games, that automatically refused to touch Sea of Thieves and Black Wake for the very reason that she called out to Wade one night, which is that it's a game that he spent so much time on that he even put aside and even ended up counseling a few plans with her straight up just to play it and record it with a bunch of friends because he was having an absolute blast to be fair which does make some sense although it still doesn't really i would say this is a completely different subject but you know it doesn't really excuse counseling things and arrangements you already had just because you're having a blast. Like, as much as I support, and I always would like everybody to have as much of a blast in life, and that's all it cares. But getting back to the point, she straight up called out and said that, you know, basically straight up, like, yeah, you can keep playing. You know, you're, you're just determined to do this consistently. Ignore basically everything including me and certain things I want to do or certain plans I want to, you know, have with you just to play your game that's with your friends that you're all hyped about that is 100% just that. It's going to burn out and you're not even going to remember the game realistically like a month from now. And literally like two and a half, three weeks later, nobody was recording it. Nobody was playing it. It just died. It just flat out died. It fizzled after like two months of like nothing but hype. Just like Black Wake did. And Sea of Thieves technically killed Black Wake in a way. It's 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 uh player base. They kinda of stole a lot away from it because everybody was hyping it up Sea of Thieves like it was like the game of all time, you know. And obviously it wasn't because it was purely hype. It, Succeeded for those two months with that and then it just kind of cr took a crap and just went down the garbage chute And hasn't been seen since for the very reason it was purely hype based Now we have a third one that everybody's hyping up, but not in the same way. I've noticed the hype is Incredibly different than it was with Sea of Thieves 
And so is the the determination that everybody had for it to finally be released because it hit a lot of hitches on its supposed release dates and everything. They had so many different problems with their release. Which actually, now that I think about it, Sea of Thieves did too. I remembered that. They had a lot of different problems. Mainly server issues, I think. But I know that this one, I don't think it was 100% server issues. It was partially that. But there was a few other things that they were having issues with. But they were just doing everything they could to try and alleviate it. Let people finally play it, you know, and everything. Like they wanted to. Even though it was, ended up being like, what, three hours late? And then they decided... Right before they were like, oh yeah, by the way, this is the last thing we said. It's like three hours from now. And then they decided they were going to wait an entire day, like 15 hours. Just to, they said like, oh, we're going to need 15 hours at least to fix this. So, sorry. <laughs> it's like, what? But, you know, people finally were playing it. And I, to be fair, haven't heard the people, especially the content creators that were really into it, ready to play it right off the bat. Uh, mention it since then, realistically. I haven't actually seen, so thus far, of course I haven't searched yet, but I haven't seen any from any content creators that I know of and that I've watched and that I'm subscribed to, and I'm subscribed to, I think, like, at least a hundred plus different gaming channels, to be fair. I've, I'm pretty sure. I'd be kind of surprised if I wasn't. You know, big and even some really small ones and even some of our friends of mine, and I haven't seen anybody post any videos in that area yet. Um, so I'm not sure if it really is as popular as it could be, but I don't think it's also very fair to compare it to that of Sea of Thieves or Black Wake because, again, the response to it was different. People were, especially the content creators who were familiar with their experiences with Sea of Thieves, knew that they probably would keep having, they would probably keep having issues. If they had some issues you know, like a week or two ahead of the release date, then you could tell they kind of... They were being a little tougher on these devs because they're like, okay, you know what? We had that happen. You know what that's like. There's no excuse this time, basically. And if this happens, so help me God, basically. And that might have fizzled a little bit because of the fact they did last second say, wow, you're going to have to wait another 15 hours at least. Not an entire, like, two days for us to finally fix the shit we should have fixed before we released the game. To be fair, if this game becomes as big, maybe even bigger than Sea of Thieves, and it could because as far as I can tell, it seems like it's, comparative to Black Wake and Sea of Thieves, it's much more expanded, it's much more expansive, it's much more, well, it has a lot more gameplay, you know, playability to it, longevity. Um, and depth to what you can and can't do in the game, you know, building, like, you can, it straight up, it kind of reminds me a little of Ark. In fact, I, another thing about it, there is one content creator that did start a series on it that I am subscribed to, and that's King Daddy DMAC. And that's funny because I was about to compare it to that of Ark, because, if I didn't already, because of the fact that the way it's described and the things I see that you can do in it and kind of the direction it seems like the devs want to take the game... And it, which is, you know, you can tell it's intentionally different than that of Sea of Thieves and Black Wake. You can tell that they want longevity more than over the hype. You know, they want their game to succeed longer, at least longer, if not long term, rather than what Sea of Thieves and the other one did. It makes sense to me, therefore, that I would see the ARC player, the people who just constantly make nothing but ARC content, are like, you know, that love ARC so much and rave about it. I could see people wanting those people those content creators specifically loving the game and wanting to play it and becoming dedicated to it if it continues in that direction. Obviously, it's been recently released within the last few days. It's not necessarily going to be that big yet, and it's not necessarily going to be that successful yet. It's not going to necessarily be that in-depth yet. Obviously, there's still going to have errors and bugs in it that need to fix, but if they're truly, the devs are truly dedicated and they really want to keep going in this direction and they don't suddenly change, then... It's going to be good for them, I think, in the long term because the fact it will be like Ark, but at the same time, you don't want to be too similar to any other games, especially, I feel like, in that kind of a RPG survival type genre because, I mean, you need a healthy balance in everything, obviously, but I think that that you really definitely have a very precarious balance you need to find that you know, or place that you need to find to actually keep your precarious balance in check and not have it suddenly topple, which is easy to do. I don't know, it's kind of interesting to think about, but the main point I want to, why I wanted to actually talk about it is the fact that 
the main reason, and I know this is the case, the main reason why pirate-themed RPG video games are suddenly such a hot genre right now, you know, it's not the it's not the hot genre that everybody's talking about. Everybody's talking about you know that of the uh, battle royale, obviously for obvious reasons. But the pirate RPG is the second to me. It's the second most in demand PC video game genre right now, um, and I think it's very obvious because of the fact that again you have all these different pirate games suddenly releasing, uh, you know, in the last like two maybe three, but mainly two years, and the main three big titles within less... I think even less than a year? Or is it... I, th I know two of them are less than a year, because obviously Sea of Thieves released this year, and I know that... In 2018, obviously. And then I know that, uh, obviously, again, this game, Atlas, just released. I think Black Wake, it might have released last year, or it released in 2016. I can't remember which one, but still, it's like a two-year span, you know? of three different pirate themed games that all were really big. Two of them fizzled within two months, which was easy to predict because they were hype based. This one, again, it doesn't have the same hype, so I think it'll last longer. It's also more expansive, blah, 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 blah. things I've already said. It makes sense to me though that this is a big genre hit right now and that, you know, all the corporate capitalists are just like pooling in all their money and like, we gotta go into this harp right now because it's not gonna last and they know it's not gonna last because it's a nostalgia based uh, factor that's making these kind of games and these RPGs specifically big right now. It's all about the nostalgia factor for people like me. Not because I, I personally like pirate stuff, necessarily, although I slowly, for the first time in my life, I'm slowly getting a little more interested and in, into kind of pirate-themed stuff, which is weird because it's really late, same with kind of dinosaurs and stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, you're you're a male, and you're now getting into it at like almost a quarter century old? Yeah, I'm a late bloomer, what can I say? <laughs> I'm also getting more like a 12-year-old and a lot of the jokes I make and stuff and things I say sometimes. In mind, like, I'm just super late and blooming. Like, I guess I'm going to be, like, perpetually 13 years late to a puberty party or something. But it's just so weird to me because... It, or not weird, but it makes so much sense to me because of the fact that, yeah, it, it's people in our in my age group, you know, the, the, the uh, like, you know, 20... Really, like, more like 22 and over millennials through Gen Xers that really they're the ones who are driving this sudden surge in pirate themed games based off of nostalgia because these games primarily only came out from late 80s through like the really early 2000s i'd say like say 1986 through like 19 or through like 2002 realistically is kind of where the pirates came out pirate theme was at its peak um some would argue through like nine or uh, 2004, more like, is Sid Meier's Pirates, which is pretty well reckoned as some of, one of the best pirate games uh, yet. The first one came out in 1987. The remake came out in 2004. Also, notice the years in between those releases. The nostalgia factor again. Um, in fact, if you look at a lot of the pirate game releases, it was between, like, the late 80s and really early 90s, like 1990 itself. Then it stopped, and then you had late 90s through early 2000s, say 98 through like 2004, which obviously 2004 would be the last one of that era and it would include Sid Meier's Pirates. And then there's this big break and then you hit 2000, it looks like probably 2012 through 14, there was a, some random surgence, but it wasn't the same thing because that was Assassin's Creed that mainly took the big, the big hit. Uh, side of that thing, and it wasn't truly that piratey because it was Assassin's Creed. Obviously, you're more of an assassin, not actually a pirate. But so, yeah, it, it has about the same amount of years in there between about 12 to upwards of 20 years in between each set of releases of this genre of games, and usually you can tell like the peak was realistically late 80s through early 90s, and now the peaks finally been hit again between last year 2017 and probably through like 2019 through 2020 you're going to keep seeing these kind of games and the kind of hype that they have behind them because and mainly from people that are like 22 24 25 plus you know up through like 35 38 
that are like hyping it up and like I'm so fucking excited because these are the games that they played growing up. A lot of them. It's purely nostalgia based success that this resurgence of the pirate RPG genre has erupted. It's a lot like the actual RPG genre in general suddenly started really getting big around 2000, 2008, I guess. And yeah, I wouldn't say PC game wise, it didn't get too big until 2000, somewhere between 2010 and 2012. And then from there on through, like, I'd say realistically through probably this year um, was its peak period of the resurgence of the RPG games. But as a digital computer game and stuff like that, rather than as a board game, as a lot of them were, and most of them were, in fact, especially in the, really the 80s, was a big, booming peak period where RPGs were like the shit. And then it kind of fizzled, and then, yeah, again, like, from, like, I'd say 2012 on through of this year, at least, that's the next big resurgence in the period, for the same reason. Nostalgia factor. It's purely capitalism predating on people's nostalgia to want to relive their childhoods. That's why the RPG genre, genres and stuff suddenly erupted into flames. You know, you have various podcasts and uh, series and even YouTube channels and streaming channels and even TV shows that were or are based purely around playing RPG games. Whether they're on PC or more usually, they're more around playing RPG games, the classic ones from like the 80s, which are mainly board games, like Dungeons & Dragons was a huge resurgence, again, in the same time period of 2012 through 18. Dungeons & Dragons just suddenly erupted into popularity again after the nostalgia factor kicked in now that everybody's turning 30, you know, who played it before, yeah, 30 and 40, they're like, oh, that's, that was so cool, that was so rad, you know? It's like in the nine, late mid late nineties, it was all about skateboarding and BMXing, and then in the eighties, it was all about you know that metal out you know me, breakout of the metal genres and stuff and music along with you know gothic you know styles and Dungeons and Dragons. Everybody had to have their Dungeons and Dragons sessions, you know. It, it kind of reminds me a lot that that specific kind of reminds me a little bit of a. Uh, what now for Christmas is the big white elephant party, Christmas party thing that everybody seems to do each year at their work, you know, or something. And it's like, it's a resurgence. It's all it really is, you know. It, it's comparative to that currently. I could see that fizzling out, the white elephant thing. And then suddenly, or same as Secret Santa, is equally as big, came up around the same time as the white elephant concept. Yeah, I can see it fizzling out and then suddenly reappearing like 15, 18, 22 years down the road. Suddenly just as popular as now, if not more popular, because everybody that was so used to that is suddenly like, oh yeah, boom, you know, explosion, nostalgia factors everywhere. And that's really what I know is responsible for this resurgence, not just RPG, but especially the pirate RPG games right now, the last couple of years for the pirate games specifically. It's because of the nostalgia factor. We're getting between you know 24 and like 40 years of age. We're like we need to play the games that we grew up with again. You know, it just suddenly like it just hits you like over the head. And nostalgia does that where it like consumes you, and you're like, I got to do that again. It's been way too long. It's totally understandable. But the problem is that I feel like that's just a form of hype, and so obviously it's gonna fizzle at some point, and so it's gonna suddenly burn out. And it won't be until again, as usual, somewhere between, in or between 10 and like 20 years down the road before it ever happens again with the next generation behind us, basically. Like, oh, I remember watching the play. We got to do that again. You know, yeah. it's kind of how traditions work now that I think about it. It's the same kind of thing. It's really just based around hype and and what you are influenced by, what you, you, you grew up with and saw people doing and talking about all the time and all that. And watch, in this case, you know, digital age, watching people play you know, and all that. Which means this is no no doubt all this will suddenly happen again. But that's what I wanted to talk about today. And this first, you know, chatterbox. I don't know. I might even just call it chatterbox. Like, I don't even freaking know what to call this yet. Because I don't have... It's just a concept of, like, you know what? I'm really feeling this. Let's do this. And so I did. So, 
But that's those are the two things I mainly wanted to talk about today. I don't know why it took me probably oh, 20 minutes plus to talk about both of these things for some reason. Like I said, I have a problem with talking way too much and being even overly detailed, but then that's me being me, I guess. But at the same time, this if I do this consistently enough, this might actually be good enough to kind of retrain my brain, if you will, and my instincts to not be this way, <laughs> where I just like talk way too much. I guess you tuck on more tuck 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 on more subjects. I can touch on more subjects, you know, and stuff. I uh, whatever I want to talk about at the time, but that's what I want to talk about. And if you have any any ideas for another thing to talk about or anything like that, go ahead and leave them down below. If you know, especially if you you were interested in anything I was talking about today, you know, that'd be great. I don't know if we wanted to feel. Let me know that you were interested in it. Hey, you know, that would be great to know. Uh, if you want to, you know, chat about or mention other things about, you know, or even your opinions about what I talked about today, whether it's true or not, or, you know, what you think, or just, I don't know, additions or subtractions or changes or whatever else, you know, that's that's what I would really encourage you guys to do. Because, again, engagement is something I really enjoy. I really would love to see other people's perspectives on this stuff and just chat, basically, you know, kick it, like, like this entire thing is about is just kind of kicking it and talking about whatever I feel like talking about kind of like a podcast tends to be a lot of times you know yeah just feel free to interact down below let me know what you think about the things I talked about you know and especially you know what I think the most the thing I would really love to know is specifically this last topic what especially you know my, my channel is kind of based around gaming and I do watch a lot of gaming content that's the main thing I watch on YouTube is gaming I would love to actually see your perspective on this sudden hype train of nothing but like everybody's all about these new up and coming pirate RPG games. If you really, you know, I would love to know what you think about it personally. Whether you agree with me, you don't agree with me, you agree on some things but not on other things, whatever. I just simply would love to see your perspective, love to hear what other people have to think about it and say about it really just get that perspective from other people. I would love to see it because this isn't something that's really being talked about at all because obviously, you know, you're talking about the big the big names in gaming. You're talking about the big, you know, companies and how supposedly all the big dogs and gaming companies are losing billions this year somehow, which I highly, I strongly, strongly doubt is really true. But then again, I'm known as a major skeptic of pretty much anything you tell me so <laughs> and you know obviously everybody focusing on things like ninja and pewdiepie and his battle with t-series and they're focusing on obviously they're focusing on games and stuff like that they're focusing on the big names they're focusing on the big dogs in gaming and they're focusing especially i would say on battle royale like that's a v shiz right now that and for some reason, Roblox. Like, I love how I started my channel off. Like, I, I, literally, Roblox, at the time, was the only thing I could record. And I was so excited to start my, my channel with doing Roblox. Because I'm like, hey, I could finally start my dream of being a gaming YouTuber. And so I did that. I posted five videos the first day. And I think five the next. And I think, like, three the day after that. And, like, four after that. And, like, two. And then, like... I think like another three and then five again before I finally settle on whatever I settle on and eventually I bought Minecraft, but yeah, it's so funny. So if I just stuck with playing Roblox, I might have actually had my channel actually explode and I might just actually be living somewhere else and not in an affordable income apartment with my mom. <laughs> just to think about that. I want to try to make it a goal that I do maybe near between 20 to maybe 45 minutes. Preferably somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes uh, length videos like these rather than like an hour or something and Again, I don't even know how I'm gonna edit this I mean it may not even have a consistent editing style of these videos, but either way. I hope you guys enjoy This first edition of chatterbox or random chat or random talk or whatever the hell I'm gonna end up quote unquote branding it as but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it, and let me know your thoughts, your opinions, or whatever, down below. And uh, I'll see you all in whatever my next video is. Stay safe, stay fluffy, have a great day and night, wherever you are, and goodbye.